Hi, the discussion today I'm going to be talking to you guys about is uh, pellet velocity versus pellet energy. And uh, a lot of these videos I just do cold turkey. I don't uh, sit down and prepare for them. I just start talking and just do the best I can. So don't expect anything real professional, but I will do my best um, to explain everything to you guys. I, I don't want you confused or anything, but I'll, I'll take my time here. Um, this is something that every air gunner should know because it's going to affect your hunting, it's going to affect your target practice and everything um, when you're comparing velocity versus muzzle energy. So anyway, to start off, I'd like to say this test was performed with the Model 34 RWS and the pellets that I'm showing here are a Hypermax and a Super Point. Um, I didn't have a 22 caliber Hypermax left because I shot them all up, so I took a 177 out. Same thing with Super Point. I have 177 of that kind too, just to show you what they look like. So I'm going to put them up to the camera. Hopefully it's going to focus good. You can see they're exactly the same pellet and looks, but one of them's alloy and the other one's lead. So the alloy one's a lot lighter. It's probably a tin alloy pellet, more than anything. What I've got here is I've got a list, and if you look on this panel right here, on this side, it's the Hypermax Velocity up to 75 yards, and then you got the Super Point right here up to 75 yards. Um, if you see a plus right here, what that is, is that means that the Hypermax, for instance, is the fastest pellet up to that certain distance. Like, for instance, 30 yards, the Hypermax is still faster, but then at 35 yards, you'll notice that the Super Point has more velocity. And both of these started out close to the same energy. You got the Hypermax starting out at 15.89. You got the Super Point at 15.89. 3.3. Three. So they both have about the same starting energy, but you notice that 35 yards, uh, the Hypermax has got 6.53 foot-pounds of energy, uh, but the Super Point has much more energy, 9.74 foot-pounds, even though they started with the same energy. Now I'll explain that a little later, but I want to go down to this chart here. I want to show you guys, this is kind of typical with all pellets too, a lot of times. Um, for the example, I'm going to give you, especially at 25 yards. At 25 yards here, you'll notice that the Hypermax lost 49% of its energy. And the Super Point lost 29% of its energy. Let me give you the weights on these pellets. Uh, the Hypermax is 9.9 .9 and the Super Point is... 14.5 grain. Now, just going off of 25 yards, you'll notice that the alloy pellet lost half of its energy only, or even out to 25 yards, which is which is really quick for losing that much energy. Let's go out to 50 yards. 50 yards, it lost 72% of its energy. And the medium weight pellet lost 49% of its energy. So what you could get from this is you could get basically a statement that at 25 yards, all light pellets usually spend 50% of their energy at that short distance. And at 50 yards, the medium weight pellets lose half of their energy. And we'll talk about heavy pellets too after I'm done with the uh, with the furthest range here, which is 75 yards. At 75 yards, we got a loss of the alloy pellet, the light one, 86%. And then we've got 66% for the heavier pellet. Now, the Hypermax final energy at 75 yards was 2.18 foot-pounds of energy. What that translates to, 2.1 eight foot-pounds of energy is basically a 177 pellet not even sticking inside of a pine board. That's how much energy it's got. 
What this translates to the heavier pellet, 5.28 foot-pounds of energy, that's 75 yards. What this translates to is if you took a Crossman 1377 10-pump pistol and pumped it up 10 times, you'll get about 5.28 foot-pounds of energy. And uh, that's the best example I could give you guys for that right there. Just so you guys have an idea, if you have that pistol, you've got an idea of what it is, what a RWS 34 will shoot a 14.5 grain pellet at 75 yards. So let's talk about heavy pellets now. Now you notice that I've got a 14.5 grain pellets, but they do have 20 grain uh, weight pellets and 22 and even heavier. Now you could you could predict that the heavier pellet, the 20 grain pellet, would probably yield about maybe seven foot-pounds of energy at 75 yards. What that translates to, seven foot-pounds is, uh, seven to eight foot-pounds would be kind of like your Daisy 880 10 pump and 177 cal. If you pumped it up 10 times and shot it at point blank range, that's the power of the RWS at 75 yards. So you get where I'm going with this? Also, I want to talk to you about lightweight pellets. Lightweight pellets are really not designed for long range accuracy. For instance, this Hypermax, they are a very accurate pellet. But when you start playing with them past 25 yards, you're going to notice some of the accuracy is really going to drop off. That's because light pellets aren't meant for longer ranges. Medium weights are meant for longer ranges, like out to say 50 yards or maybe even a little more, plus or minus. But then heavy pellets do their best at longer ranges. So you see what I mean? You got, you got uh, close range, medium range, and then you got heavy pellets for long range. So when a pellet like this comes out of the barrel at 1,000 to say 1,125 feet per second, you're breaking the sound barrier somewhere in there depending on humidity and air pressure and all that scientific stuff. I don't want to go into it but you get the point. This pellet is going to tumble. It's going to have problems even at 25 yards. So if you're shooting the RWS Hypermax you want to make sure that since it's a light pellet you want to shoot it uh, in a gun that's going to yield a velocity that's a lot lower than breaking the sound barrier. Typically, these light pellets, what they do is they give boost to, say, a weaker air gun. So, for instance, you could take this Hypermax pellet, if it was a 9 grain, you could throw it, say, like in a Webley uh, Hurricane air gun or Tempest or something like that. They shoot 22. Or a 1322 Crossman, you could put it in there, and you could you could get a little bit flatter shooting and a little bit more velocity out of these pellets than you can say with the heavier pellet. So it's more for a boost more than anything and testing. Now the thing about testing is the RWS Hypermax depending on what kind of air rifle barrel you have, if you have a choked barrel they do really well. If you have an oak, if you have a unchoked barrel which means when you put the pellet in the pellets are very loose it, it has wobble and play in it. That can affect accuracy too. So the test you want for a pellet in a barrel for accuracy just to start off even before you fire the pellet is you want to make sure both the head and the skirt get some rifling. If the head does not get rifling but the skirt does you can have front wobble here. If the head and the skirt don't get rifling the whole entire pellet could wobble inside the barrel and you can get blow by which means some of the air could come from behind the skirt and you could lose some energy as well that way. Another thing is a loose fitting lightweight pellet in a powerful air rifle will lose velocity too because it's it doesn't have enough pressure to build up. So essentially what happens is the pellet comes out of the barrel without building up any pressure because pellets pop like corks on wine bottles. You build up a lot of pressure 
and then it comes out of the barrel at a fast rate. There have been times where I've tested lightweight pellets versus medium pellets where a lightweight pellet was actually going slower at muzzle and some rare cases of that happening uh, were like with the P1 I was testing an old laser pellet which are very very loose pellets. I was getting 550 feet per second but then when I tested a 7.9 I was getting 560 to 575. Now what's going on there? You got a lightweight pellet you know actually going slower than a heavy one. What's going on is there's too much play inside the barrel and that could cause problems with velocity. It makes a light pellet not efficient. Same thing with the heavy pellet. If you don't have rifling on both the head and the skirt you're going to have some problems. Now with the RWS rifles uh, the barrels are really nice because they grab a hold of the pellet and when you inspect the pellet if you just push a rod through your air gun like a piece of wood or something like this stick here um, you'll find when you take the pellets out there's rifling both on the head and the skirt which is really nice that's what you want in an air gun and uh, if you guys like springers like I do Hotson has got some really really nice rifles that uh, do just that. They choke the pellet and they put rifling on the head and the skirt which explains why the Hotson spring piston rifles were accurate right out of the box. Now if you super tune a rifle obviously you're going to get more accuracy. You know if you uh, take the, uh, the guide and stuff and you fit it to the spring so there's not as much play and you do a, a very very light grease job you can uh, get a lot of the vibration out and maybe have the air rifle perform a little bit better for accuracy but generally I found that my hot sound rifle I'm not going to tune it up because I think I'm satisfied with the accuracy that I'm getting out of it and you could always put a scope on these rifles too so but anyway uh, that kind of concludes my talk with uh, energy versus velocity when in doubt and if you could hit at longer range I would just I would go for the heavier pellets 